An entitled Karen demands that I give up my service dog as she claims that her child needs it a lot more than I do. Things got so bad that she stole the leash to my dog and refused to give it back until I gave up my dog. Here's what happened. So I was browsing in a shopping center with my autism service dog by the name of Knox and this was all being done as a training. I was picking clothes, trying them on, hoping that at the end of the training I'll find something that suits my style. As I was entering another alternative clothes store, this entitled Karen taps me on the shoulder. She looks at me and says, you do know that dogs aren't allowed in this store, right? I look at her and I'm visibly confused and I say, I'm sorry? This entitled Karen then says again, are you deaf? I said that you need to leave. I then pointed to Knox's vest, showing the label and the program name that certified her. I said, ma'am, this is a service dog. And before I could go any further, this entitled Karen cut me off. She said, you are clearly not disabled disabled. Even less, you're not autistic. You can talk. Now leave the store before I call security and get you banned. And at this point, I was barely holding it together, trying not to cry. I was trying to talk to her in some kind of an attempt to excuse myself. But she says, no, I'm going to walk you to the exit to be sure that you and your dog are leaving. And it was at this moment, my service dog Knox was alerted. I needed to sit down, but I couldn't. Everything was so loud and it seemed the lights were getting even brighter. I started crying and Knox moved between my legs for comfort. And at this point, I just kept saying over and over again to this entitled Karen to please go away. But she was talking over me, saying that I wasn't autistic, claiming that this dog wasn't in training and that this was just some kind of scam. Overall, her speech became more and more muffled as I got even more overwhelmed. I attempted to sit down on the ground, but this entitled Karen grabbed my arm. And it was at that moment I snapped and I shouted, do not touch me. If at this moment we didn't have a crowd before, we certainly did now. A security guard appeared and I calmed down just a little bit, enough to understand what they were saying. The security guard asked what was happening and this entitled Karen said, this person over here is faking it. They have scammed a program to give them a service dog for their autism. My child will benefit from that dog more as they really have autism and they can't even speak. I need that dog. As she was saying it, I felt a tug on Knox's leash, and I unclipped it from her collar. I was now at this point holding on to Knox from her harness, as she was sitting right in front of me, giving gentle snuggles and kisses, trying to help me calm down. The entitled Karen then started screaming, How dare you! She then turned to the security guard, demanding that they do something about this. The security guard then turned to me and asked if that was a service dog, and while I was still crying, I was able to mutter out the words, Yes, it is. This entitled Karen wasn't having it, though. Thankfully, the security security guard shut them up and asked if I had an ID for the service dog, to which I happily said, yes, I do. I gave the security guard the needed documents and they checked them and gave it back to me. After checking everything over, the security guard said, your documents are intact. You are good to go about your business. But once he had said that, the entitled Karen freaked out. She said, no, that is not fair. My kid needs that dog more than this adult. The security guard then asked this lady to please return the leash to this person and to continue on her day. This entitled Karen then literally tried to imply that she was taking my service dog and that I needed to give it up. But this security guard had my back as he said, ma'am, that's theft. If you don't return the leash now, I'm afraid I'm going to have to call the police. After that, the entitled Karen handed over the leash to the security guard who gave it back to me. I was escorted away by the security guard just to make sure the entitled Karen doesn't continue to harass me. And after taking a chance to rest on one of the benches close by. I calmed down a bit and then eventually left. Absolutely insane story. I can't believe that someone would act like that towards a random stranger they've never met. I mean, that's ridiculous in my opinion. I was really hoping that the police really would be involved just to put this entitled Karen in her place. But at least the security guard had your back. I'm so sorry you had to put up with this. And hopefully something like this never happens to you again. Because the challenges that you deal with on a daily basis are probably hard enough to deal with as it is. So having some weird entitled Karen get up in your face and talk down to you like that, I'm sure only makes matters worse. I am having a really tough time dealing with my pregnant wife's mood, and I honestly don't know what to do. For the past several weeks, my wife has practically been angry at me for everything, and sometimes she'll show a hint of kindness for maybe a few hours before she'll give me the silent treatment and the cold shoulder again. I feel at a loss of what to do, and this even gets me mildly angry for a few minutes, but then I always try to apologize for 
whatever happened. Now, the things that she gets angry about are not even related to me most of the times, I feel. For example, yesterday, she was wanting to go get some hot Cheetos, so we drove to a gas station together to grab some. They did not have any, so I told her we were going to stop by the next one to get some, but she refused to do that, and then she hasn't talked to me since then. Before that, she got angry because I forgot to change out our puppy's pee pad. I apologized and immediately changed it, but it still led to her giving me the silent treatment. And then before that, she just woke up frustrated at me for absolutely no reason. Sometimes she would get angry after seeing something on TikTok, like a girl getting flowers, and then getting mad at me for not getting her flowers. But I do every month on occasion. It's these little things that make me feel like I'm doing everything wrong, and I feel like garbage most of the time, and it's like I'm walking on a thin rope. It sucks seeing her treat me like this as well, and then talk to her siblings and family completely normal. I am frustrated because I have never gotten angry or raised my voice at her once in our entire relationship, but then I get the complete opposite treatment, only much worse as of late, due to which I assume is probably caused by the pregnancy. I have brought this up and talked about it a few times before, and she apologizes and says it's her hormones, but then it's just back to doing it again a few hours later. Is there some key word or something I can do to fix this? Should I just leave her alone every time she gets angry? Or should I keep trying to please her and apologize? What should I do? This is definitely a tricky one because I can see both sides of this. It is definitely a wide known fact that a woman's hormones definitely go out of whack when they are pregnant. So that really can explain away why she's acting so angry and hostile all the time. But in that same vein of thought, that is not a good enough excuse in my opinion to treat someone like garbage that is supposed to be on your side. Especially when she can clearly flip a switch and treat her family like nothing's wrong. That's just unacceptable in my opinion. And while no, I don't think she can control how she feels, because I'm sure she feels all over the place at this point in her pregnancy, she can certainly control how she acts. So maybe having a conversation about this would probably go a really long way. But if it still doesn't work out, I think your backup plan of just leaving her alone when she's acting like that might be the best way to solve this. In the end though, pregnancy is very hard. And after having family members go through pregnancy, their hormones are all over the place. And I'm sure there's a lot of nuance in the experience that you're having. So regardless, I would just be as patient as possible. She clearly was never like this when you first got with her. So maybe just take her angry outburst with a grain of salt and say, you know what? She's going through a hard time right now. And maybe once this baby is out, she will go back to the person that you knew and loved. My girlfriend is ruining our relationship and she simply doesn't care. And now I don't know what to do. Every argument we have is an excuse to stray from the relationship, meaning she will talk to other people and flirt with other people or basically just talk garbage about me to anyone who will listen. Anytime one of our friends does something nice for their significant other, she then compares me to them and outright says things like, why can't you be more like them? Without any regard for how embarrassing it actually is when she does it right in front of a group of friends. She will openly flirt with other people and then get angry if I tell her I have an issue with it. I know I'm not perfect and I know I have my own insecurities to work on, but at the same time, I don't think my insecurities are unfounded when I've caught her cheating on multiple times and she continues to treat others with a level of respect I have never received throughout our relationship. And I fully recognize that I'm an idiot for staying as well as being an idiot for believing that things will get better or that any kind of change will come about. We've been together for a significant amount of time, which I prefer not to disclose. The last few weeks, I have told her I don't like the way she talks to me. She has told me that I read into what she says too much and that I shouldn't be so sensitive. While I might be overreacting in some instances, I don't think it's unfair to tell someone joking or otherwise that they are being too harsh. Our most recent argument stemmed from a similar situation where she said she was being rude because I was being annoying. I asked her how I was being annoying and she turned it into a bigger argument, basically telling me that I'm useless in every facet. Look, I'm not perfect and I will always defend myself, but I just don't understand how it's so easy to treat others like a doormat and think you're the one in the right all the time. Her excuse is that I don't deserve her treating me nicely when I haven't earned it. At this point in my life, I don't have the courage right now to just get up and leave. But it honestly really hurts to just sit here and stew in my own thoughts all day. What should I do? I think you know what you need to do, but you really don't want to do it for some reason. This lady does not love you. She treats you like garbage on a daily basis. In fact, she treats everybody else around her a lot better than the way she treats you. And that 
That is absolutely unacceptable. In my opinion, from the outside looking in, you are absolutely in an abusive relationship. And you really should look at finding someone else who really will love you. The fact that she puts you down and says that you haven't earned her respect to be loved is ridiculous. That is not something that you have to earn. If this really was a loving relationship, it would be something that is basically expected out of each of you. And I get it. You've spent a lot of years with her and you don't want to talk about how long. But it's honestly never too late to reevaluate where you're at and to check in and see if maybe it's a good time to find somebody else in your life. Also, this is the biggest red flag here. She has cheated on you multiple times. You have caught her multiple times and yet you are still deciding to stick around. I just don't think this is good for you and this is a really unhealthy relationship. So maybe take the steps necessary to reevaluate this and see if this is even worth pursuing because otherwise, honestly, I just don't see this getting better and you're only going to be miserable. My husband getting angry at his video games is starting to make me hate being in my own home and I honestly don't know what to do. I'm hoping to get some advice regarding my husband's gaming habits. He has recently started playing a game and since it's released, has become completely infatuated with this game specifically. He spends almost every free minute playing and is neglecting spending time with me and our two-year-old daughter. I knew he would spend lots of time playing when it first released, as he does really enjoy this franchise, and I was fine with this, and I didn't make any family plans for us to allow him time to play. But now, weeks later, I still cannot make any plans for us at all, because he just wants to play the game all the time, and gets annoyed if I ask to spend time with him. More recently, he has started raging at the game, yelling, swearing, and hitting his desk pretty much every time he plays. He has now made the home completely unpleasant to be in, and I have had to leave several times due to his raging behavior. He plays in the evening when our daughter is asleep, and has on occasion woken her up. He plays when I'm trying to sleep, and makes it impossible for me to rest. I'm also 24 weeks pregnant with our second child, and I've had to sleep during the day when he's at work, because I'm just so completely exhausted. We have a small home, so there is nowhere for him to play where we can't hear him and be disturbed. During the day when he plays, I have to play loud music just to drown him out, so he doesn't upset our daughter with his yelling. I have tried multiple times to talk to him about his behavior and express how uncomfortable it is to be around him when he's acting like this. I have especially expressed that he not play loudly and rage in the evenings when we are just trying to get some sleep. Every time I approach the subject with him, he gets defensive and often very angry at me, saying that he really enjoys the game and is taking playing very seriously, which involves frustration and some yelling. I understand, and I accept that as part of gaming sometimes, but I feel like his behavior has become extreme and very disrespectful towards me and his daughter, who have to share the space with him, especially when we're just trying to get some sleep. He has a high-pressure job and uses the game to blow off some steam, so I don't want to take that outlet away from him, but I am now completely miserable. I am sleep-deprived, and I hate being in my own home when he is playing. I'm also getting worried about this behavior continuing when our new baby arrives, and it's very sad that the last few months as a family of three are being spent this way. How do I talk to him about this? And is there anything I can even do about this situation? What should I do? So the first thing that came to my mind is maybe it's time to record him. Usually just a sound clip will work, but if you can catch him when he's the most angry, when he's loud and he's raging and he's getting angry, maybe you can then show that back to him and help him see that, yes, this is really a problem. This might be a really good way of starting a solid conversation. And I'm not saying do this in a malicious way. Even just an audio clip will probably be really good to help him see that this behavior has got to stop. He's got to make some kind of compromise. And he needs to understand that you're not taking the game away from him. He can still absolutely play it, but he absolutely needs to calm down. He's disturbing you who is pregnant, and he's disturbing your child who's trying to sleep. And that's not fair for either of you at all. He is neglecting his responsibilities as a father and a husband. And it's not fair for you to pick up the slack, especially when you are 24 weeks pregnant. That's not okay in my opinion. And he really needs to step up and do the right thing. Today, I messed up by getting lost in the woods. This story takes place in Florida at a management area that lets a certain amount of people hunt there every year. And as the season came about, my dad was one of the lucky ones who was able to go there and hunt. So we decided to scout out a spot for him while getting in some quality fishing. To clarify, fishing and walking in the woods is allowed. You just can't hunt there without a permit and permission. So anyhow, my dad found a spot from the river that seemed really promising. So we decided to check it out. After checking out the area, we decided 
decided to go just a little more inland, and after walking a couple of minutes, I noticed that my stepbrother and my dad were nowhere to be found. In my head, I couldn't comprehend how we were split up. We were right beside each other. So I figured I'd yell out to try and get some kind of response from somebody, but I heard absolutely nothing. So I figured I would wait a few more minutes and then call for them again, and still nothing. At this point, I figured I'd just go back to the boat and wait for them. But of course, with my superb sense of directions, I ended up going the wrong way. So about 15 to 20 minutes in, I hear a gunshot, knowing full well it was my dad trying to make noise for me to find him. He carried a concealed weapon for defense, because in Florida, everything wants to hurt you. Especially when you're in the woods, when you have to deal with black bears, deers, hogs, as well as the Florida Puma. You simply don't want to take any chances. Unlucky for me, though, it sounded distant and like it's coming from all sides. So I contemplated sitting on a tree stump, trying to figure out what to do or listen for another shot. But then in the absolute silence of the forest, I heard it. The very faint sounds of cars could be heard in the distance. After thinking about it and being the great genius that I am, I decided to follow the sound, find a phone and give them a call to let them know that I'm okay. So I started my great journey. The first encounter had been rather uneventful, except for the part where I could feel my lips drying up and chipping a little. After two hours in, however, I had wild deer pop up no more than 10 feet away from me, about four to six of them. They started running except for one buck, which I'm assuming was contemplating if he should attack or run. And luckily, he ran. The journey continues and I'm seeing a lot of wildlife, including two bobcats and a gator sunbathing on the other side of the river. After roughly three hours or so, I can finally hear the road. But of course, I'm not known for my luck. And I see a black bear in the distance. And yes, he spotted me. We look at each other for a few seconds and thank God he walks away. I was already saying my last prayers, grabbing my knife and telling myself, well, this is it. Luckily, it didn't come to that though. Now, finally, I see the road. I know where I am. Exhausted, I was making my way home. And about halfway there, my stepmom spots me and picks me up. She gives my dad a call and we meet up at his house. After contemplating on how we ended up split up, we decided on me being an idiot for turning the wrong way and not waiting. My dad ended up buying me a GPS that can track your exact steps and was talked into buying a phone. I personally can't stand phones, but now I absolutely see the convenience. I'm amazed that the original poster doesn't have some kind of cell phone, especially when you're going to go hiking and in the woods. The chance of you getting lost clearly is pretty high. I mean, I'm surprised you didn't have something like that on you when you went in there. Just in the off chance that you do get separated from your family. But thankfully, it all worked out in the end, despite the fact that you had to hike three hours just to find a road. Today, I messed up by learning the hard way that you don't pluck a bird's feather and expect that bird to be happy about it. This story takes place a long, long time ago, and this was all the way back in my grandparents' farm in Virginia. It was the early 80s, and I was just a little kid at about four or five. It was apparently apparent, even from the early age, that I was going to grow up to work with animals. And you know what? I ended up doing that. I've been a professional dog trainer for almost 20 years now. This story explains why I work with dogs and not birds. You see, I was a wee lass of four or five, and my family was visiting my mother's family in the mountains of Virginia. On this particular day, we were visiting my mother's great aunt, Aunt Tot. As we pull up to Aunt Tot's house, I noticed several peacocks wandering around and was immediately fascinated. When we got out of the car, my mother, who knew me very well, warned me not to mess with the peacocks. Still eyeing the birds, I gave an okay. Then my mom snapped her fingers in my face and made me look her straight in the eye. She said, do not mess with the peacocks. I looked at her and I promised that I would not. But you know what? I lied. Well, I did try not to mess with them. I really did. I followed them around for a while, pretending that I worked for National Geographic. But after a while, I got bored, and I started to think about how much I'd like to have one of those pretty feathers. I looked around to see if there were any on the ground, but there were none to be seen. And so, I approached the large peacock from behind, and told myself that he wouldn't miss just one feather, right? And so I plucked a feather from the peacock's tail feathers. And to this day, I break out into a cold sweat just thinking about 
about this. For a moment, all was well. I had my feather, no blood was shed, and the peacock didn't seem to notice. But then, he lifted his head from where he had been pecking at the ground and slowly turned his head to look at me with his beady bird eyes. I had just enough time to think, oh no, before the peacock suddenly fluffed up his tail feathers and charged straight at me. I did what any self-respecting four or five year old would do in that situation. I turned tail and I ran for my life, screaming for my mommy. As I ran with the speed of a cheetah, I could see my mother sitting on a rocking chair on the front porch with a glass of iced tea in her hand. When I got near, I noticed that my mom seemed strangely unaffected by my plight. Worse, one of the peacock's henchmen was now blocking the steps to the porch. I dove to the left and ran around the side of the house, my foe hot on my heels. I must have run around that house 10,000 times, it seemed, screaming for my mom the entire time. Never once did my mother stir or come to my assistance. But over my screaming, I did hear her say, I told you not to mess with the peacocks, as I dove under the front porch for safety. I have no idea how long I hid under that porch, possibly as long as three days and nights. I don't recall the peacock finally wandering off, but I know he waited for quite a while for me to come out so that he and his peacock buddies could rough me up. When I was eventually coaxed out from my safe space, I was absolutely covered in dirt, sweat, and tears. I was eventually cleaned up and laughed at by my distant family, but you know what? I was alive. And even after all of that, I lost my feather in the end. So that, my friends, is why I respect and fear birds. Was it my fault? Absolutely. Would I do it again? No way. I'd rather deal with a 200-pound upset Rottweiler than ever deal with a bird of any size. And that is definitely a lesson learned. Peacocks are scary animals. They are not nice despite how beautiful they look. So I can absolutely visualize this original poster running for their life to try and get away from this animal. This is one of those moments in a kid's life where it's definitely going to be a core memory for the rest of their lives. And from the sounds of it, that's exactly what this was. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright free music to use for your next stream.